Good morning. Uh, I'm Filippo Giordano, uh, Program Director of the Master of Science in Management and Finance I'm at Lumsa University in Rome. Uh, please welcome to the second webinar of the Innovation Talks of Lumsa. Innovation Talks is a program of 10 weekly uh, webinars aimed to discuss innovation, technology, sustainability, and the future of business in society with expert and opinion leaders in the business community. Uh, these talks, this program is organized by the Department, the Department of Law, Economic, Politics, and Modern Languages. Uh, and uh, by the Master of Science in Management and Finance in collaboration, in partnership with uh, the Association of LUMSA alumni. Uh, today, uh, we talk uh, about FinTech, uh, so the innovation in financial services. Uh, um, and uh, this is why I'm very pleased to introduce uh, and to leave the floor to the Professor Claudio Giannotti that is our head of the department, but uh, uh, is the professor of banking and finance uh, in our department uh, and director of Master of Science in FinTech. So he's uh, uh, our um, opinion leader and uh, leader of knowledge, uh, so we, we say, in this uh, particular field. So thank you, Claudio. I leave the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi everybody, welcome everybody. I'm very glad to introduce you our lecturer of today. Uh, Fabrizio Villani is the co-founder and the head of growth of Fintastico. Um, I'm very glad to introduce uh, and to warm up this uh, uh, innovation talk. Um, he is going to uh, to take off from sustainability and he will land to fintech i know that he has a specific uh, definition of fintech considering three pillars of fintech um, he will uh, talk about some uh, verticals of the ecosystem and uh, he will uh, give us some ins insights about uh, how the um, ecosystem uh, is shaping so thanks a lot uh, Fabrizio for being with us. Welcome to our university. And uh, I take the chance to uh, say thank you to you, to Professor uh, Filippo Giordano and all the innovation team, uh, team uh, Alessandro Cavallo, Andrea Geremicca, Livio Lamattina, Domenico Messi and Claudia Proietti. So Fabrizio, welcome to our university. Uh, super welcome and uh, go ahead. Thanks a lot. So thank you, Claudio and Filippo, for this invitation. For me, it's a great pleasure today to be here at Lumsa University uh, in an online way. But uh, I feel all the warmth from, from your invitation and your posts on social networks really close to me. So uh, it's a real pleasure to, to be here with, with all of you today. So let me share the, uh, the presentation with you. Um, just a moment. So, um, just a moment. Um, all right. So, um, can you confirm to me that uh, you can see the, the screen, please? Can you can you see the presentation? Yes. Okay, good. So um, yeah, the topic of this presentation today is uh, how sustainability helped me to rethink finance and embrace fintech. Uh, my name is Fabrizio Villani, and uh, um, I will give you a little introduction about my uh, my background and how uh, I, I started from uh, sustainability and finally uh, end up uh, in, uh, in fintech. And of, of course, it's, it's a pleasure to, to end up uh, at the end of the day in, in the fintech space and in the fintech sector. So <clears throat> basically, my, my background is in bachelor. Uh, I had a bachelor degree in international business from the University of Bergamo. 
And during my bachelor degree, I had the opportunity to, to study one year abroad at Fakhochschule Kusta in Tyrol, in Austria, where I follow some courses on renewable energy, trading of uh, electricity, and so on and so forth. Uh, when I went back to, to Bergamo, it was in 2010, and there wasn't yet a master degree in English, and I didn't want to go to, to Milan just for, just for make a, a master degree, just for follow a master degree in English. So I started to look uh, abroad, and I found a master degree at uh, Bu University, Region University at Amsterdam in Environment, Resource Management, Specialization, and Energy Studies. So uh, I graduated uh, in Amsterdam. It was uh, 2011, and then I spent one more year uh, looking for, for a proper job, uh, let's say, in uh, sustainability in the capital, in the European capital of sustainability that, that is Amsterdam. Unfortunately, back in the days, uh, um, even if it was the Obama era, so there were, uh, in theory, there were plenty of jobs in photovoltaic and, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, back in the days, there were, they at, in Amsterdam, at least, they were looking only for uh, finance graduates and uh, computer science graduates. Uh, no one was looking for, for someone with uh, my background uh, and with my master degree, master degree in environmental resource management, but um, so I, I didn't have a proper background in finance. I, I wasn't a finance uh, graduate or, or a, a computer science graduate, but uh, by chance, by luck, uh, through LinkedIn, uh, I was able to to get a job in a in a fintech company. So the the union between finance and technology, because this is what it means at the end of the day, uh, fintech, literally speaking. And so I move from Amsterdam to Barcelona in order to start to work in a, in Cantox that uh, back in the days it was a peer to peer platform for foreign exchange operation between companies. So they would put in contact uh, an European company that needs uh, to exchange a uh, euro in dollar with an American company, for instance, that needs that, that have the, the opposite need. So they need to exchange dollars in euro and uh, through, uh, um, fair uh, fee and transparent fee, uh, it was possible for both companies to, to save money in comparison to traditional channels. And these, when I joined Cantox, it was 2013. In 2014, I launched uh, uh, Fintech Italia. Uh, I, it's a group on LinkedIn, and nowadays is the biggest uh, group community uh, on in Italian on, on fintech related topics. And then, uh, so there uh, I started to, to explain a little bit some basic concept uh, related to, to fintech, like uh, what is a robot advisor, what is a crowdfunding and so on and so forth. Uh, the first uh, years were quite uh, difficult because, uh, um, because of the lack of trust uh, of not only the members of, of the group uh, on LinkedIn, but in general uh, of all the, the workers from, from the traditional finance sector that didn't really believe in, uh, in FinTech and its uh, potential also in the Italian market. Uh, after FinTech Italia, I also um, end up in a um, uh, discounting invoice discounting uh, platform. So uh, an invoice discounting platform allow companies or uh, SMEs uh, to uh, discount an invoice in um, maximum 72 hours because in 24, four, 48 hours, an SME company can receive a quotation. And then if they agree on the quotation from the from the invoice discounting platform uh, in, in the following 24 hours, they can receive 90% of the total amount of the invoice in, in their bank account, and then the, the rest 10% minus a, per, a percentage, a, a, a fee uh, that was uh, agreed in advance uh, with, with the client uh, at the end of the of the invoice, uh, when, when the invoice expired. If we do the same with uh, traditional uh, financial institution, we, it might 
take uh, seven to, to 10 days in order to complete the, this operation. So this is, for instance, an advantage of using this kind of solution. Then for uh, like stock payments that nowadays is gomedici.com, I was included in uh, one list of top 100 influencers for the Italian market uh, on FinTech. Uh, and then in 2016, InsurTech News and Insurance Nexus include myself in the top 10 InsurTech and IoT leaders worldwide. That year, uh, the winner was the director of the Allianx Accelerator. Allianx uh, uh, a huge uh, insurance company for the one of you that doesn't know uh, Allianz eventually. And 2017, it was the year when I helped to uh, create Asso Fintech, that is one of the two um, association of Fintech in Italy, the, the first one, and this uh, association for uh, Fintech and Insurtech company. And then 2017, it was also the year of Fintastico. Fintastico uh, is um, nowadays is mainly a media that helps consumers and companies to find out and discover which are the, the main players in the in the fintech market and which solution, which fintech solution can solve their uh, financial needs. And uh, we're working uh, in order to transform Fintastico from a media uh, to a real uh, and proper marketplace of innovative financial services. And why I'm starting from sustainability in order to, to, to reach uh, fintech? Because I realized that there are a lot of common points between uh, uh, fintech and sustainability. So for instance, also uh, with sustainability, there isn't uh, any uh, universally agreed definition what what, what is sustainability or what sustainability means. And we will see that it's the same with, uh, with FinTech. There are many different views on what, what it is, uh, sustainability and also FinTech. And um, a, a little difference in comparison to FinTech is that uh, the, the first time that uh, we started to talk about sustainability, more or less, it was in 1992. Uh, because the concept of sustainability derives from sustainable development uh, that uh, uh, became uh, part of this uh, Earth Summit uh, in, in Rio in 1992. So uh, it's a lot of years that we are talking about, uh, about sustainability. And uh, um, usually I show the, this picture and also the, the picture in the next slide. And I, I always ask a question like, do you think that these uh, electric car, not these specific electric car, but in general, electric car is sustainable? And then I always wait for, for a reply and some people think, yes, it's sus totally sustainable. Some other people say, no, it's not sustainable due to the batteries and so on and so forth. The answer is that it depends. Uh, it depends from the source of electricity that uh, you use uh, in order to charge uh, these, uh, these electric car or other uh, uh, way of m moving and other way of transportation for, for mobility. And uh, the same it goes for, uh, for instance, uh, this uh, Coca-Cola Coca -Cola Live is a product of, of Coca-Cola. And uh, in general, they uh, market this product uh, in a way that the, they state that they use less uh, natural resources like water in order to produce uh, Coca-Cola Live. And for some customers, uh, Coca-Cola Live is is sustainable, is cool, is a product that they are happy to, to use and to drink. For some other people, for some other consumers, it's just a uh, green wash or, or green washing. Uh, what is green washing? Uh, so according to Greenpeace, uh, there are many ways corporations green wash their products and image. And here there are four criteria. So dirty business, adi blaster, political spin, and compliance with the law. Advertising, uh, proper uh, voluntary environmental achievements, which are in reality required by the law. And you can read also the, the other three uh, above, but uh, uh, it's quite interesting for me the fact that, for instance, nowadays, after the introduction of PSD2, the new directive, uh, uh, the new European directive on payment uh, um, services. Uh, some uh, traditional financial institutions are uh, uh, 
pitching the, the customer and, and state like, hey, check out our new financial aggregator service that is pretty cool because you can have in a single dashboard, you can connect all the different bank accounts that you also have with other banks. In reality, uh, it's not a huge innovation because uh, as we might know uh, as an expert in, in this field, uh, it's just uh, something that is already included in the uh, PSD2, in this directive. So basically it's not something innovative, but it's just uh, complying uh, with, with the law. So according to, to Greenpeace, uh, the, this would be uh, a kind of uh, greenwashing and uh, what i'm noticing uh, more and more uh, uh, especially in the last year is that uh, there are um uh, more uh, fin washing uh, cases so traditional financial institution they uh, sometimes pitch uh, their new services or new product as fintech because fintech uh, became something uh, cool uh, a kind of buzzword but at the end of the day uh, it depends from the definition, of course, uh, uh, what they are offering is not fintech or, or even worse, is not fintech at all. Um, why fintech exists? Well, uh, a possible uh, reason and explanation for why fintech exists uh, is because of finance, of course, is not perfect. So uh, fintech uh, tried to challenge the, the status quo and uh, with the limited resources that they have i mean uh, I, i'm speaking about uh, uh, fintech startups they they try to to change a little bit the status quo why mm, they are trying to do this because uh, as as we might know from the big short uh, a nice movie for the ones that didn't have uh, the opportunity yet to to watch it's a, a recommendation uh, it's a good uh, it's a good movie it's not on fintech it's on the previous financial crisis but I found it quite uh, interesting uh, because also in that movie we can see some of the problems that finance still have uh, nowadays uh, and some of these uh, problems we, we can read it in this uh, 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 slide and these problems leads to also a, a change in behavior from uh, from the perspective of uh, consumers and, and companies because like for instance uh, millennials so uh, gen generation uh, z z generation i guess uh, a common sentiment that they have uh, is that uh, they are not really lucky uh, um, not not lucky they are not really happy when uh, there is a, a case when uh, with public money with common money uh, we state governments and other institutions have to save for instance uh, a financial institution in trouble uh, because uh, this is something that goes under the name of uh, um, lemon socialism so privatizing profits and socializing losses so when uh, when a financial institution have uh, everything uh, uh, fine and everything is going well for them so they are making profits uh, they they of course don't don't share profits with, with anyone but if the, if uh, go if things goes wrong and if they are in trouble then they they ask for some help and eventually this help always come under uh under public money uh from from governments and other institutions and so on and so forth so of course uh i guess young people they they tend not not to like this kind of uh, behavior and but at the end of the day i think uh, that the responsibility of uh what what's going on in the world uh, not only in the financial world but in general in the world uh, it depends uh, it relies on all of us and in these uh, slides for instance we can see the amount of money that some uh, spanish institution but we can do the same with uh, uh with uh, financial institutions from also other countries invest in uh, companies that make uh, weapons uh, around the world. So uh, a possible question on this slide is how many of you uh, enjoying uh, supporting or financing with your money uh, a company that makes weapons and eventually help uh, uh, wars 
around the world. And, and probably I'm expecting that the majority of you, uh, 98% or 100% of the people will tell me, I, I'm not going to support in any way a company that uh, uh, build uh, uh, weapons. Well, if you have, uh, let's say, your money uh, in BBVA, in a way, uh, it's not that you are approving the fact that BBVA is investing in these companies that make weapons, but unfortunately, uh, the financial institution that you choose, uh, it also invests in weapons, and weapons are, are the, the basic part of, of any war. So um, I think with our money, every day, we can make a, a decision, we can make things uh, change. So we have the power in our wallet, a digital or physical wallet. We, we will see, this is not the, pro the, the, the point yet, but uh, we should remember that every day how we invest and spend our money, uh, we can make a little change in our world and make, make things better. This is my, my personal opinion. So uh, history and definition of fintech. So for me, uh, fintech was born in 2007, 2008, the, the last uh, financial crisis. So not, not, not this one. <laughs> and um, because some uh, digital entrepreneur realized the possibility that it was possible to digitalize part of the uh, banking uh, supply chain or the financial supply chain and make it better. For some other uh, scholars, experts, and and also banker, uh, eventually FinTech was born with PayPal at the end of uh, the 90s or uh, with uh, um, credit cards uh, during the 50s and 60s uh, of the last century. Personally, I, I, I make it uh, the beginning of uh, FinTech for me is 2007, 2008. And uh, this was, uh, possible also thanks to technological innovation, to, to some new values and behaviors of the consumers and the current generations, uh, like uh, for instance, just uh, just uh, think uh, for a second uh, with regard to Greta Thunberg and uh, the fact that um, part of the consumers and companies nowadays seems to pay more attention to, to environment and climate change issues and, and so on and so forth. After 2007-2008, we live uh, for some years uh, a kind of fintech hype. So the number of fintech worldwide uh, did not stop at all. Nowadays, I, I guess there are more than 15,000 fintech around the world. And these lead us to the fragmentation of financial services. So basically for every um, vertical uh, uh, that a bank uh, is covering. There are plenty of fintech that specialize in that specific vertical and try to to um, offer to the customer or to the company. It, it depends from from the vertical a better user experience and a better service in comparison to uh, a, finan a traditional financial institution that have a universal approach. The universal approach is uh, I'm able to do everything. I'm able to offer to you everything from digital payments to loan to mortgage to insurance, to bank insurance, and so on and so forth. And come to me and I will solve every every uh, financial issue or problem that you might have. What, what FinTech does uh, do is uh, to specialize in a specific vertical and try to make it better. And uh, nowadays, also thanks to this PSD2 um, regulation, uh, we are currently living in the age of APIs, application programming interface. The application API, an API is a piece of so software that allows two uh, platforms that, in theory, they are not supposed to uh, talk or to communicate to each other. To, to communicate to each other, an example it can be that we read uh, an article on Financial Times. Uh, it's really interesting. We want to share it on a, on a social network, uh, for instance, like Facebook, in order uh, to, to share this article also with, uh, with our friends and with our network of friends and contact on Facebook. And basically, this share is an is a API because it allows the Financial Times platform to communicate with 
Facebook, that it's another platform. And thanks to PSD2 and API, um, we, we started to live uh, since uh, after the September 2019, that it's when PSD2 enter into force. We are starting to live in this new open banking, open finance era that uh, uh, basically um, state or, or uh, what it means is that uh, finance and banking services are not uh, only um, an activity due, uh, done by, by banks, but also to or, and insurance companies, but also by other players like fintech and third party providers that sometimes they also can be uh, internet giants for instance so uh, why is it complicated to give a definition of fintech uh, is because there are different uh, opinion if we ask to a banker uh, it might answer to us that it is just uh, their all the research and development department if we ask especially in 2015 2016 to a digital entrepreneur what what was or what is a fintech uh, his answer it would it would have been it is the disruption or it is the disruption of banking or traditional finance but be sure that if we ask to a regulator his answer it would it would have been uh, it is an innovation now we are going to regulate it uh, because in uh, regulation always comes a little bit later in comparison to to innovation and uh, because it's uh, eight years the, this year is the eight years that i'm working in fintech i come up with my own definition of fintech and as Claudio correctly mentioned is based on three pillars, technological innovation, better customer attention, user experience, and transparency. What I mean with technological innovation, the fact that uh, fintech startups, for instance, use the latest uh, programming languages like Python, and they are not familiar with, uh, I don't know, COBOL is a programming language that was made, uh, launched and created in, during the 60s, and is currently used, still used by more than 80% of all the ATM, automatic teller machines that we find around the world uh, by banks. And the point is that you can't find any fintech that knows an anything about uh, uh, COBOL uh, worldwide because fintech simply don't use COBOL uh, as a uh, programming languages. So um, the latest technology allow fintech to skip the, the problem of um, legacy system uh, legacy, a legacy system is a system that uh, um, a technological system that you can't change from a day to another another example is uh, physical servers that some financial institutions still have nowadays in their headquarters uh, and not only in their headquarters versus uh, cloud servers and it's clear that uh, a fintech will never start a, a business uh, with a physical server, but they tend to, to directly use cloud, cloud servers and these uh, eventually uh, give them a, an advantage in comparison to, to physical server. And the latest, latest technology uh, also uh, allow um, fintech to then offer a better customer experience and uh, also better customer uh, care or attention to to their uh, clients better customer experience because because of the latest technology better customer care uh, because uh, usually the number of uh, of clients of a fintech is much lower in comparison to to the number of clients of a bank but be this is because mainly due to the specialization of the fintech on a specific vertical transparency uh, from my in my opinion is the real competitive advantage that fintech still have in comparison to the to the traditional players and with transparency what i mean is the fact that a consumer or a company is before closing an operation with a fintech they uh, usually know in advance which is the cost structure of the operation. An example, it can be with uh, TransferWise that uh, currently is rebranding himself uh, at WISE, is a well-known service uh, for allowing people to exchange uh, money uh, from one currency to another currency. So if I want to go from Rome to London and I need to exchange Euro into pounds, I can go to my bank branch, I can go to an office in an airport with uh, exchange uh, in uh, capital letter 
or I can use a transfer wise that uh, will show me uh, on, on my desktop on my desktop and on my laptop uh, on my screen which is the uh, exchange rate in real time uh, between uh, euro and, and pounds and also we, which is the uh, the commission the fee that they will apply to me in order to change uh, for instance 1000 euro in 1000 pounds and uh, or just uh, 1000 euro in pounds and this is uh, completely different from the customer experience that we live uh, in a bank branch or in a in a office uh, exchange office at the airport where usually they don't show us the uh, exchange rate in real time and um, they do not only apply to us the fee for this service for so in order to make the exchange of currency plus also spread and spread is the difference between the uh, the uh, official exchange rate in real time and the, the rate that then these uh, uh, these exchange offices uh, or uh, offers to the to the final customers. So uh, we transfer wise in the majority of the cases we can save money if we are customers that wants to exchange euro in pounds or in other currency. Uh, so what's going on in the fintech, uh, in the traditional sector, in the in the middle, we can see um, like traditional players in financial services. And then on, on the left, uh, which are the, the other players that are trying to, to enter into the, the market, while on the right side, uh, we, we can see the, the fintech uh, startups. Um, this is a slide uh, quite old because it's from 2016, but uh, I think it's still uh, uh, nowadays still quite uh, uh, useful in order to better understand what's going on. And uh, an, a possible exercise, exercise, it would be also to update this slide, uh, a possible homework for the ones of you that wants to, to do also an extra effort and try to um, reflect and think on, on this uh, lesson, is to uh, try to update uh, all the logo and add also the logo that currently are missing in the different uh, boxes that we can find on on the left uh, and on the on the right side for instance for me uh, PayPal and Shopify mm, doesn't make a lot of sense that uh, were uh, put it into fintech startups because PayPal uh, is a internet giant in, in my opinion or at least is a big tech and uh, in telco and others for instance uh, mm, uh, for me it's missing orange is a tele french telecommunication company that a uh, few years ago launched on the market not on the italian one yet uh, especially because orange uh, the presence of Orange in Italy is not so strong, but in other European countries, they launch an uh, Orange Bank. So this is an example of a telecommunication, telecommunication company of another player that wants also to enter into the, the financial market. Here we can see some of the verticals uh, of FinTech that we uh, identify uh, on fantastico.com and these are also the the verticals that we use in fantastico in order to help consumers and companies uh, to orientate themselves in, in the market um, we will see some of the verticals later on but in, in the meantime uh, i also want to try to to make uh, to make it a little bit more interactive or, uh, or to make you reflect a little bit on what's going on in the market so here we can see uh, an example of an organizational chart in a in a bank of course fintech don't have the same organizational chart so we don't have uh, departments like marketing, sales, business, and IT that usually don't communicate to each other like it's currently happening sometimes uh, still uh, in some uh, traditional financial institution. That's why we are talking about silos division uh, in this uh, traditional organizational chart in some financial institution. Uh, but in FinTech, we don't have this, uh, this division. And uh, here we can see three pictures and I want you to, to reflect uh, just one minute or less on wh which are the three uh, jobs profiles, the three job roles 
uh, the three roles uh, that are needed in order to start uh, up a fintech company the day of tomorrow. So let's imagine that you finish your master's degree or your studies at Looms University, and you don't want just to, to enter into the, the job market, but you want to launch your own fintech startup. So the question is, which, which, which would be the, the three roles uh, in order to build a fintech startup? And uh, what I think is that you need, uh, of course, a chief executive officer, a chief technology officer, and a chief marketing officer or, or a chief operational officer. It depends, of course, from which are uh, your uh, objective and goals with your fintech. These are uh, some of the main actors of, of a famous uh, uh, TV series called uh, Silicon Valley. And that, that's why they're all, uh, all men. But of course, uh, uh, we, we need more women in, in finance and not only in finance, but also in fintech. So I hope to see in the following years also a lot of women that decide to, uh, to start their own fintech company and help uh, also to to make it uh, more inclusive, the, the fintech sector. When we have the team and we have the idea, what, what we have to do? Mm, well, uh, an answer is that we, we need to, to ask for some money. We need to fundraise some money. And we can do this with the three F. So family, fools, and friends. Usually we start asking money to uh, family, fools, and friends in order to start our fintech uh, startup uh, fintech is unfortunately a re really capital intensive uh, sector so uh, it's quite complicated to do a bootstrapping uh, of a business idea and you might need some uh, uh, help from an external professional investors at the beginning you can start with the money from friends family and fools fools are just people that you you pitch you present your business idea and then you try to uh, collect some some money some investment from them and then you move on and you go to business angel that are professional uh, investment uh, investors and then after a business angel you move on to, to um, venture capital funds and so on and so forth 90 percent to 95 percent of startups worldwide um, usually die and between five and ten percent of the startups that make it uh, usually they can make an exit uh, so they can be acquired by a bigger company or they may, they would go public with an IPO and these this is means in both cases means that they actually achieve uh, uh, success and uh, crowdfunding as you might know we have different type of crowdfunding from equity crowdfunding to donation based crowdfunding and uh, um, reward based crowdfunding here we have some some examples some companies that you can um, check out uh, later on an innovation in the last year is also the um, the creation of real estate uh, crowdfunding that allow consumers to buy a piece of of, of uh, um, an house or, or a building. Another another vertical is the insurtech vertical. Basically, is the fintech apply into the insurance company uh, sector. Uh, so, uh, in case of Metro Mile, for instance, uh, we have uh, an insurtech company that offer a pay per use um, a policy. So, basically, if I have a car, why? Uh, do I have to pay uh, an insurance policy for 365 days so while I'm using this car only during the weekends? Well, thanks to Metro Mile, I can use the, the, the car uh, and, and be covered by an insurance policy for, for just the weekends where and when I'm driving my, my car. And then we have uh, micro insurance for uh, mm, objects uh, like uh, our laptop if we go into a neighborhood that is quite dangerous and risky or if we go abroad in a travel uh, in a risky country or on a risky area uh, we can decide to uh, insure our laptop for instance or smartphone just with uh, switching uh, on our smartphone and activating an insurance policy and then we have a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, insurance companies that allow a group of people to save money on on their uh, insurance policy if uh, if nothing happened uh, on a specific uh, period of time uh, with regards to damages to a car and, and so on and so forth 
here there is um yeah you can have a look to different examples of um, there are many <laughs> in shoot tech worldwide uh, in in different uh, uh, verticals and uh, and approach and the uh, prop tech is another vertical uh, basically is the the fintech applied to the uh, real estate uh, sector and uh, again uh, here also we, we can find some uh, real estate uh, crowdfunding platform Rectech are uh, all the solutions that allow uh, companies, banks and insurance companies to, to deal uh, with uh, a new directive like the GDPR directive, the new general protection data regula uh, yeah, regulation. Um, there were uh, some Rectech companies that develop uh, a product or services for banks, insurance companies and fintech in order uh, for them to to comply in a much easier way with this uh, specific directive, but we can find different examples also with uh, with different uh, uh, directive and different issue on a from on a comply uh, side. Here we can have uh, a look of some of the rec tech uh, out there uh, I'm, I'm moving a little bit uh, faster because time uh, is against us and. So um, another vertical is made by app and um, platform that allow users to better manage their, their money. Here we have some example, Goin and Fintonic are from, from Spain, Oval is from Italy and also currently based in the in, uh, UK. And basically these um, app and platform allow users to, to have a financial coach or a service that allow them to better categorize their expenses uh, in, in the market. And of course, uh, nowadays we are also seeing the, the growing of challenger banks, are banks that were just uh, born in a digital way, so they don't have a physical branch like, for instance, N26 and Revolut. Of course, uh, challenger banks still have a long way to go to reach the user base of traditional institution, uh, that traditional institution are also known as incumbents. But eventually their goal, the goal or, of a challenger bank is not to reach the same amount of uh, clients of, uh, of a traditional bank. In these slides, uh, we can see that globally there are 75 fintech unicorns valued in aggregated at 270 uh, billion dollars. Uh, and unicorn is a startup that reached an, an evaluation of 1,000 million dollars. And uh, we can see that uh, we have also some example in uh, UK, in Europe, uh, with Transferwise, Revolut, uh, N26, and uh, Klarna in uh, in Sweden. For some uh, prediction, uh, because uh, yeah, you in uh, in economics uh, sometimes, especially with econometrics, you have to make some prediction. My prediction is that the finance of the future uh, will look more and more like a, a platform. Here we have a, an example. So eventually, uh, traditional financial institution will care about their specific specific core banking uh, issues and, and topics uh, while leveraging on the specialization of other players and here we can see some different players that are really specialized in their own vertical uh, like uh, in payments we can find stripe adn and so on and so forth and uh, just to conclude for with some resources uh, an amazing book uh, for me it was uh, in the facebook aquarium the res resistible rise of anarcho capitalism that uh, explained to me quite well also why there is this rising of cryptocurrency token blockchain decentralized finance and so on and so forth i know that it's a topic that uh, some of you uh, are finding quite interesting so i'm recommending to you to read this uh, this this book and uh, also to check out the documentary how cash is becoming a thing of the past made by deutsche welle is a german channel that explain how um, the, there are uh, we are uh, losing uh, physical uh, bank branches uh, but we are replacing them with, with some other uh, uh, tools and, and solution and of course uh, for the for the italian speakers that are listening uh, to to this presentation uh in uh, in february last month first of february we um 
we published together with uh, Giancarlo Giudici, professor of corporate finance at Politecnico of Milan, uh, this book, uh, FinTech Expert, uh, that wants to be like a guide for professional, not professional, in discovering which are the new uh, jobs related to, to this growing sector that is FinTech. Thank you. Here my my contacts uh, the detail and now I stop uh, the the sharing of, of the presentation and uh, answer uh, a question if, if there are any. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Fabrizio. Thanks a lot for your interesting speech. I appreciate that you mentioned the uh, thinking about the evolution of fintech about. Uh, um, the importance of uh, uh, being a platform. Uh, we used to say platformization. No? And um, so in this, uh, in this scenario, I think that uh, uh, banks uh, can keep playing, playing an important role within the fintech system. And I want to ask you um, if uh, between cooperation and competition, in your vision, uh, we will uh, face uh, more competition or we will face more uh, cooperation within the fintech ecosystem between, yeah. you know, players, between fintechs, banks, uh, big techs and so on. Yeah, well, it's a good question. And um, yeah, especially in the last years, we saw also this uh, competition uh, buzzword uh, growing in the finance and, and fintech sector. Basically, competition is, it means uh, that traditional uh, financial institution compete with fintechs on a specific topic and collaborate with fintech on other specific topics. And uh, I didn't really believe a lot in this competition until last year when I saw also that some players in the market really started to, to use and collaborate with FinTech platform in a positive way. Some example, we saw some example also in the Italian market, for instance, uh, Banca Generali relies on a Credimi platform that is a, a lending uh, platform and uh, because uh, um, thanks to Credimi um, SMEs can receive uh, uh, loans or uh, invoice discounting and so on and so forth some kind of help and funds uh, from from Banca Generali in a much faster way in comparison to uh, to uh, the, the current system that are using Banca Generali. But this is not the, the only example because then uh, we saw, for instance, uh, Conto. It's a French challenger bank that currently is available also in the Italian market for uh, SMEs uh, that uh, thanks to Borsa del Credito, another uh, lending uh, platform from, from Italy, allow SMEs to, to uh, receive uh, money, uh, funds in a much faster way and flexible way. So uh, these are clear examples of the fact that it's possible to uh, collaborate between uh, banks and uh, fintech. And I guess in the near future, we will see more and more uh, of this kind of collaboration, especially because as you currently mentioned, uh, big techs uh, are coming. So uh, finally, banks and insurance companies realize that fintech is not only a threat, but uh, it might be uh, an opportunity for, for them. So uh, it, it's better to, to collaborate. Otherwise, uh, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Google, uh, sooner or later will enter into, into play and uh, with, with, their, with all their resources and also especially all the trust that consumers and com companies uh, have uh, with these brands. Yeah, okay, I agree with you. Uh, big tax, the role of the big, uh, big tax uh, is uh, growing faster and faster. And uh, we will see what uh, in the future uh, will be the shape of the ecosystem. So thanks a lot, Fabrizio. Thanks a lot. Uh, um, we are, you know, uh, quite uh, at the end of our talk. Thank, uh, thanks a lot for being with us. And uh, I want to leave the floor to Filippo, to Professor Giordano, so we can. Uh, uh, bring us to the conclusion.
connection uh, um, just want to say thank you to Fabrizio Villani uh, thank you Claudia about fintech and uh, see you next week uh, where we will talk also about uh, issues so we will go to uh, insure tech speed today. Okay. <laughs> Ta thank you for the invitation again and uh, stay fintech. Okay. Thanks a lot, Fabrizio. Thanks for being here.